So I wanted to make a quick episode really quick to talk about something that I just recently um, realized, thanks to my higher self and my higher powers, something that I recently just realized, um, and that is the limiting thoughts and the limiting beliefs that I have had, you know, I begin to see and realize my limits. They were just loving me enough to protect me. This started out with me saying, or me thinking, I have a lot of limiting beliefs, you know, though I don't have them all anymore. There are some that are still there. And I just realized, I was like, hmm, is that holding me is that um, shifting my energies to repel um, the good things? Um, because the limits aren't allowing the good things. Because that's what limits, you know, it limits, you know, it's that word is subjective in a sense. Um, basically meaning, depending on situation, it can be seen as good or bad. You know, it's up to the self to determine that um, because someone else, a limit could be good, you know, but sometimes a limit can be, you know, a, a bad thing. So that's my limits that I'm talking about. I'm talking about it in, um, for me, it has shown up in a way that uh, no longer serves me. How about that? So this started, I, I'm got to make it make sense. How about this? It started off with me um, first realizing, wow, I have limiting beliefs. And then saying to myself, you know what? I deserve a good man. I deserve a good man. I deserve good men around me. Those limiting beliefs were telling me all men are trash. All men are the same. You know? And it's not fair in the... Speaking, you know, generalization, it's not fair to say all men are trash. Just because I encountered a lot of them and a lot of them are trash, it's not fair to say all of them are trash because it's not like I've met every single male uh, born human being on this earth. Now, if I've met every single male human being born on this earth and had the same experiences, then I can say proudly all men are trash. But then I realized, I was like, it's not fair to generalize because once I start generalizing, then I'm going to start seeing individual people as, excuse me, individual males as that and only that. I'm going to be blinded by my generalization and therefore I treat them as such or I miss out on just love and life with them because I'm treating them as if they are a generalization. They could be the greatest man in the world. But because of generalization, if I keep saying, you know, generalizing things, you know, it begins to internalize and then it begins to project, you know, um, it begins to reflect what my internal being is saying. And it's not fair to say that it is. I feel like it is necessary in the healing process to have your moments of generalization. Yeah. You know, it's just, you know, for me, it's just like, okay. It served me to have generalization in the past, but now it's no longer serving me because it's time and it, I'm safe enough to move away from the generalization. I'm safe enough to move away from the limitations. See, that's the thing. I've recognized that my limitations back then served me. They were protecting me. My limitations was to always think and to always generalize and to stop myself from getting close to men because it let me know, hey, this man could possibly hurt you because we've seen it way too many times. So this limiting belief, it has to be here. It's, it, it's a survival mechanism. You wouldn't survive if you weren't limited at one point. That's what, that's, I'm talking about me. I'm not saying you as in you listening, I'm saying, and now if you can relate to this, that's a different story. But uh, I'm, when I say you, I'm talking about me. 
um, in my experience, my journey when it comes to limitations. Um, and so I just thought about it, like, you know, like all the abuse that's happened to me, you know, all from men, all from men, all of the abuse (laughs) that I've been through growing up, all from men. I'm not generalizing. I'm not generalizing. It is literally like every ounce of abuse has been from men in my childhood. So I'm just throwing it out there. So my limiting beliefs, you know, of course, was just like, yeah, all men are the same. Um, Stay away from men. You know, if you have to have to interact, limited. And by have to have to interact, I mean like, oh, at at, at a job, you know, or um, class project, you know, that, that like, and I had to make sure limit that interaction. If you only, if you have to have that interaction, I mean, you better make it as small as possible. You know, um, don't show any form of care or love towards them. They might see that as weakness and prey upon that. So let's, let's put up a guard because we can't trust them. You know, um, so my limitations in that aspect, it served me. And I, and now I've realized it's time to recognize the love that my limitations was doing to me. Limit, my limitations, they were just trying to love me. They were loving me the best they can. They were loving me to protect, they were protecting me. That was their form of love, was protection. However, now those limits no longer serve me. Doesn't mean they don't love me. They just no longer serve me. And so I had to realize and give myself and my limitations the grace to thank them and to tell them, you now can rest. I am safe now. I am alive now, thanks to you. For now, I am safe. I'm where you wanted me to be. I am safe. You just wanted for me to have safety. And so now, I am safe. So now you can rest. You no longer have to control me. You no longer have to... um, repel things from me. I'm able now to recognize when it's time to leave. I'm able now to recognize and to be safe in the healthy way. Thank you for not leaving me. Thank you, my limitations, for not leaving me back then. But now you're no longer serving me, which is a sign that you can rest. So I had to thank my limitations for loving me enough to stick with me. You know, I I realized a lot of, a lot of just biases and beliefs. You know, for, for me, how about this? For me, it was just all a protection survival mechanism. And I'm just like, it was literally just trying to keep me alive. It literally was just trying to keep me alive to be safe in certain environments. It was just trying to do that. It didn't know how to do that perfectly, but it was it was doing that. So I'm just like, I am giving myself the great and giving those things. Well, to help me, I have to identify as certain aspects of me as a different entity that is just a part of me. That's so when I say limitations, I recognize it as a different entity that is also like still within me, you know, so that's how it it helps me to, you know, heal it and stuff like that. Um, I look at it as kind of like, you know, uh, loving uh, a child, you know, Uh, and I just have to because the limitations, you know, it is a mechanism that my inner child learned. And so. I have to make sure I treat it as such. I treat it with the love, grace, and care, and comfort that I would my inner child, that I would any child. So I, it's time that I love my limits back into light. And by loving it, it, it's not necessarily me saying to it, oh, just let it go. No, 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 no. I don't want to heal in the way I was harmed. Basically, growing up, when I cried, I was just told, oh, just get over it. Oh, just let it go. Why would I heal like that? 
Why would I heal like that? No, I shouldn't have to heal with the tools that harmed. Like I shouldn't have to heal with the tools that were used to harm me, if that makes sense. So I'm going to say another example. Um, You know, when I needed to be, when my tears needed to be heard, I was told, get over it. So in my healing journey, my intention might be to heal, but how am I healing? Quote unquote healing, because it's not really healing if I just tell myself, get over it. That's not healing. That's just reharming myself. It's just packaged differently. It, this time it just has the hope to heal, but it's not healing. So I had to take a step back and recognize how am I approaching my limitations? Because I'm recognizing that it no longer is serving me, but how am I approaching, approaching it? Am I just sweeping it under the rug? That's not healing. So I finally recognize, thanks higher self for recognizing how we are approaching our limitations, we got to approach it with love. If we're wanting, if we're wanting it to quote unquote leave, if, excuse me, if I'm wanting it to quote unquote leave, I need to approach it differently. I need to recognize that limitations, it didn't hate me. It loved me. That's why it limited things around me because it loved me. It did it out of survival. It did it out of love. It, that's what ultimately it did it out of. You know what I mean? Though there were feelings of hate that came with it. But because of the survival mechanism of it, the survival skill of it, it had to place limitation so that I never have to hate again or never have to be in a predicament where I have to like hate this man so much, you know? So it loved me enough to keep me away from these things though feelings of hate still were in it ultimately it was coming from a place of love for myself that i didn't recognize i in survival when the body goes into survival it is a form of love it is a form of love however it doesn't always know how to quote unquote survive correctly which means helpful can be harmful which is why sometimes we got to implement treatment and intervention aka therapy medicine confronting what like just self-awareness you know because our body doesn't always know how to do it perfectly but there are tools and resources that can get us to that point to where it can survive healthy to the point where, guess what? It's no longer just surviving. Now it's us aliving. We're able to not survive anymore. We're able to be alive. You know why? Yeah. So that's, that's, but anyways, the point of the matter is <laughs> I had to tell my limitations. Just now, I spoke out loud. <clears throat> just now, before I recorded this, I told him, I said, thank you for loving me. You can now rest. I got this now. Thank you for what? Thank you for the protection, the safety and survival. I learned a lot because of you. I learned a lot from myself because of you. Limitations, you helped me slow down in my in in the healing journey. You helped me to take things bit by bit. Thank you for limiting me when it served me. But now it no longer serves me. So that is a sign to tell you, you, I mean my limitations, to tell you it's time to rest. You can now rest now. Well done. Well done. You can now rest. You can now rest. So that is my journey with my uh, limitations. Um, Excuse me, with the limitations that were with me that grew um in me uh throughout my journey i from now on i'm gonna if i have to speak about limitations or if i see new limitations arise i'm i'm gonna recognize what is it trying to limit me from you know and and that's the thing sometimes helpful can become harmful so eventually you know 
it no longer can serve me and me trying to hold on to limitations. Now it's no longer serving me. Now it's just messing me up, you know, but I'm to speak about from this day forth. I am going to actively try if I do have to speak about my limitations or my biases or beliefs, you know, that may not be the healthiest. I'm to speak and approach it with love, grace and comfort I'm, I'm to love it, not to hate it. I've learned in my journey, a lot of things grow in love. <laughs> you know, though I feel like, you know, hate definitely has its purpose, you know, depending on the situation. Um, I know it's kind of controversial, um, but um, <clears throat> I've seen a lot of things grow from love. Um, and I've seen that a lot of my darkest parts, they needed the lot of excuse me a lot of the demons just needed to be loved back into angels you know my inner child did not need to be rejected because that's where a lot of the demons you know came from and I don't mean the word demon in a in a, a bad in a bad a shameful light I don't mean it like that anymore I am recognizing That those demons were on my side trying to protect me. That's where it came from. Um, That's where it started from was protection. Um, I'm not saying all demons, but I'm saying for a lot of my demons, um, a lot of them grew with inner child. And so the way to heal that for me is not to confront or approach it with, you're bad, get over it. Why are you thinking this way? Good gosh, just stop. No, it is to approach it. I recognize you. I see you. I see you. You were just trying to help me. However, now it's time to learn how to rest. I thank you for protecting me. I thank you for doing the best that you could do. It's now time to start the rest journey. And by rest, I mean, quote unquote, rest journey. That journey where it's time that the demons can either rest or they can turn back into angels. You know, that rest journey for me looked like therapy. It looked like medication. It looked like holding myself accountable, letting others hold me accountable. It, it, it looked like setting boundaries, setting external boundaries with people and setting internal boundaries with myself. You know, catching myself in the moments where I'm wanting to be limited uh, and wanting to, you know, um, have my biases. Me being able to ground myself, and I know grounding can look different for, 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 for many people. You know, everyone's different. But grounding for me, it didn't look like, oh, breathe in and out. Breathe in for eight seconds, release for... uh. 38 seconds. Okay, that's not possible. But you know what I mean? That's not what grounding looked like for me. In fact, that type of breathing, it made me more anxious in that it can do that for a lot of people. We just don't hear about it that much, but it's a thing. But grounding for me looked like, okay, I'm recognizing my biases are here flaring up around these black men because that was, I'm black and Latino, but my biases are towards uh, black men, the highest biases is towards um, black men. I'm like, okay, am I safe in this environment? And if, if, if I'm not, what are the things that are saying that I'm not safe? Because what if it's just my feelings telling me that I'm not safe, which is still valid. It's just that, and I still wasn't safe in the moment. And that's, that's great. But that the, the point was not to um, get rid of the unsafe feelings. That's not what the point was. The point was to just be able to recognize and observe in that moment so that I can know better, just have more knowledge. How am I reacting? Am I reacting from trauma? Am I reacting from unsafety? Am I reacting um, from just me having just biases because they look a certain way? You know, am I just seeing things from my abuser? Am I seeing all of these things? Okay. So it's just to be aware. It is... it. How I was doing it, it was not to get rid of the unsafe feelings. It was not. 
it, it, it just was not that that it, it just was not that I know that there are certain situations where, you know, um, there is a time and a place to um, slowly, slowly um, when we are ready um, to slowly let down the trauma response walls slowly. And that means that can mean little by little. It took me years over a little over a decade to release my uh, trauma response wounds slowly. That doesn't mean they all go away because you know what? I don't really even like calling them trauma response wounds necessarily. I also like calling it survival symptoms. (laughs) Yes, yes. So all of that, that's how... The journey of, quote unquote, rest of my limitations led me to this. But that journey, it took a while. And the thing is, folks, though I used to hate limitations, I'm finally now, now I can say, I love y'all for loving me. You loved me even when I didn't even see it as loved. You didn't give up on me. So I had to thank my limitations for the help that they have done. However, now I'm recognizing it's time to tell them, guess what? You can finally rest. I mean, you can rest with with the smile on your face. I got this now. Thank you for protecting inner child. Thank you for protecting me when I was a child, when nobody protected me limitations you protected me biases you protected me but now i'm safe enough now to say and i'm at a part in my healing journey where i can confidently say limitations you can rest just rest just rest i mean the comfiest 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 tempurpedic mattress memory phone mattress i mean you deserve rest so that's that um hopefully you relate to that um in a healthy way if not it's totally okay um if you don't relate to that honestly kudos to you because that probably means that you didn't have to go through experiences that put limitations on you. So honestly, listen, if you want to trade lives for a second, please, <laughs> we can. We can trade. Trust me, we can totally trade. Okay, but all jokes aside, you know. Um, And no shame if you're not at that point in your healing journey yet. You know, it's time to release. Um, And it like, how about this? It. The time to release looks different from f- looks different for everybody. You know, I still have biases, you know, um, towards African-American males that sag their pants. I don't think those will ever, ever go away. I don't per- personally. I don't want those to go. I don't want those biases to go away. You know, um, I and maybe it's because I just every time I see that occur see that sagging of the pants occur, which I don't see it that much, thankfully. But, you know, when I do see it, I don't, it, it's, it's something bad is happening. <laughs> okay. Like something bad is happening. Either they're looking at me up and down because they're judging me. Uh, either they're telling me I'm too white. I'm not black enough. Or why are you fag? Why are you a fag? You know, and I just want to tell them so bad. And I was just like, okay, people judge you for being black. So why are you judging me for being gay? Why, why are you judging me for being gay? Hmm? I was like, because you don't like it when people discriminate against you. But now it's a problem. I mean, but now it's not an issue when you do it to someone else. So I was just like, okay, check what you're... Look, you're not wanting equality. You're wanting privilege. Because you're just wanting to make sure that you're okay. You're not judged, but you can judge others. Yeah, no, that's not equality. That's privilege there. So... Be careful if you say Black Lives Matter. Make sure that um, you also care that other people's lives matter. That's what I would love to tell them, okay? But if I try to say that, I have this fear that they're going to get all physical 
uh, with me. And that's just because that's what I experienced growing up in in uh, my childhood all the time. Um, <clears throat> my brother was one who like sagged. It was like all the bullies and even up until like, even in going into like my undergrad in college, you know, like it would, the harassment would come from that, you know, like the sagging of the pants people. So yeah, like, so of course I, it's my biases is a protection. Um, but because of my limitations, I'm able to now like not beat myself up for having biases. I'm just like, they're here for a reason. Where's that reason coming from? Is that reason coming from, oh, just because um, I was told, you know, now if it was coming, oh, just because I was told to not like black guys, that would be different. That would be, okay, this is the time where, okay, I can recognize where the biases is coming from. The biases is not coming from a place of love. It's coming from a place of someone told me to not like this person. It's coming from a place of hate. Now, my biases are coming from a place of love. And by that, I mean survival and protection. It's my body and my brain loving me enough to protect me and keep me protected and safe, you know? And so I feel like there's different roots to biases. You know what I mean? Some happens because of legit traumatic experiences like mine did. Um, And some people, it just started to them. And by that, I mean, they were just taught a certain way. And now they carry on that way. They carry the baton. Um, So there's a difference. So I'm just giving little context of where I'm coming from with mine to just help give understanding. Um, So yes, thank you um, for um, tuning into the show. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do a season six. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, But if you want me, if you think that season six should happen, follow this podcast on uh, Spotify. You can follow it anywhere, but I can only see analytics on Spotify of who's following. Um, even though like most of the viewers view through like uh, Apple Podcasts, um, I just I can't see analytics on from Apple Podcasts because um, that's not where my like main contract is. Um, my main contract starts from uh, Spotify, so that's the reason why I can see you know. Uh, most of the analytics on Spotify, um, <clears throat> which analytics just means the numbers, you know, all that. But um, follow this on Spotify. If if I see the following on Spotify go up, got to click follow. If I see the following on Spotify um, go up, if I see the numbers go up, th- then I will know, okay, yeah, I'll do a season six. But um, if not, then I'm just going to take it as, yeah, nah, I guess no season six. I mean, because I've been feeling really discouraged anyway. <laughs> so I'm just like, honestly, at this point, um, if I see the followers go up on Spotify, I will definitely do a season six and do a season seven as well. But um, yeah, because I've been a little discouraged lately, just in general, about the podcast. So yeah, um, let me know through the numbers. Let me know and I will do that. Um, and thank y'all for supporting this podcast. Um, like I said, the point of the podcast is to save lives, is to set people free. Um, it is to learn about ourselves and others more so that we can just get closer and closer to living in love and light. Um, And especially, oh, yeah, loving our inner child. Yeah, yeah, we neglect that too much. And it's 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 not your fault that you neglect inner child. It's it's not your fault. It's not like we're taught to. Oh, um, maybe instead of letting it go, maybe you should embrace first. Maybe you you should learn where this is coming. You know, it's not like we're taught to be self-aware. You know, so, um, yeah, folks, um, so the podcast, it's only for the betterment of 
ourselves and humanity. Um, yes. Yeah, so let me know if you want to hear the podcast continue. Just go ahead and um, follow the podcast on Spotify. Okay. Uh, bye, folks. This is Josias Tarolios Epizon Abriel. Um, possibly signing out to you for the last time. Possibly not. I guess we'll see. Alrighty. Bye, folks. Oh, and last thing before I go. If no one has told you today that you are loved, that you are beautiful, allow me to be the first. I'm talking to you. You listening. Yep, I'm talking to you. You are loved. You are beautiful. Scars don't define your beauty. You are beautiful. Holy beautiful. As you are. You don't have to be perfect in order to be worth it. You don't have to be perfect in order to be loved. You're still worth love. You're still worth affection. You are not a flaw. You are not a flaw. Though it may feel like it sometimes. You are not a flaw. If someone has smiled... Or laughed because you made them smile or laugh. You have purpose. And I want you to know that. I want you to know that. Um, Stop beating yourself up. Well, try your best not to beat yourself up. um, Because I know it's hard. Okay? That pain in your heart that you're feeling... It doesn't last forever. Just make sure you try your best to love yourself through the process. Okay? Your body is not against you. It is for you. Your mind is not against you. It is for you. It just doesn't always know how to do that in the best way sometimes. So there, it is okay to get therapy it's okay to get medication it's okay it's okay you are deserving and worthy of all the love and the healing and the light the more you heal the more love you're able to receive the more light you're able to experience you experience enough darkness it's okay it's okay why Because you are a lover, an overcomer. You are a winner. You are victor. You are victorious. You are beautiful. Also, um, yes, also go buy my new book. Um, The link will be in the episode description below. Um... Yes, it's great for self-awareness and for healing journey and getting back to self. So go ahead and get that. That book is very healing. And um, yes. Okay. Bye, folks. This is Josias Taralios Epizon Abriel. Signing out.